Hello you guys, this is Wayne from 101 Animation and this is going to be a tutorial about arcs and the principle of arcs. Arcs do come in many different variations and we got Rascal here and he's going to help us to explain how to understand all your arcs. So let's get started here. So here's Rascal, and here he is standing here, and obviously here's a box that says, Don't push my button, and of course Rascal being Rascal is going to push the button. And here's the animation of it. That's the area we're going to be looking at. Right in this area here, that is where we're going to study the arcs. So what we have... We're going to look at the arcs of his hands, his feet, his body, his head, and how all these different arcs are working from one pose into the other pose. So what I want you to notice, we're going to look at this arm right here, this arm and hand to start with, and notice the arc as he comes up. In blue, you're going to see the arc. It's a S arc. On this one over here, being Rascal's right arm, it's just a C arc, and he's coming up like so. You want to find variations of arcs as for different elements of your character. So when he comes up here, and he keeps following this arc over here and following this one, he comes through and this arc makes it a little more interesting instead of it just you can have it just come up if you wished just a C arc but I try to find arcs that will make the path of action a little more interesting for the viewer to look at and it just gives a little bit more organic feel and on this one I just decided to keep it simple over here and there he comes up there and now he's coming in right there even though this movement looks straight and it is basically a straight movement with his left hand coming forward there is a slight arc it comes under there and then it pops up into there and then he pushes the button right there and this is really important to understand that it's very rare that there are straight paths of action. Animating like a robot or a car zipping by, cross screen, coming across like so, that would be a straight path of action. When a character is moving, it usually has a bit of curve in it, being an arc. So then he comes forward there. We're going to keep looking at the arms. And then he comes down. I just decided to have him come down into this arc. He keeps following it, follows it there, up, up, and he's settling in there. And now what's happening from here is he's going to do an arc that goes the opposite way. So he's coming around that way, but now he's following through there and he comes down right in here following it he wraps around this way and then he comes to a stop and then on the other arm he went straight a little bit of arc right there to push the button and then he comes up here around And then when he comes down, he's just going to follow this arc back down. And then he just settles in. Now the thing you do want to be aware of in arcs is that you don't want, for the most part, I've seen it done before, but you do not want to repeat your arc after one action. Meaning if we got a character that is looking this direction, and comes over in that direction and the arc comes around like so we 
over here, one, two, three. When he comes to three, and let's say that the character comes back over towards the original pose, you don't want to repeat the arc. What I would probably do is either I would have his head come down a little bit here, there, and then back up. Or I could have the character come over to one, two, three right there, and have them just come slightly up and back into number one. So what I mean is one, two, there's number two, three, and I'll go with the bottom arc, and then he comes back down to four there, five right there into number one right there so all i'm trying to explain to you here is that you want to for the most part not to repeat your arcs so now we have studied these arms coming up like so arms coming around this way it's going to come down slightly right through here here, just follow the arcs, comes in, and then just comes down here, follows that path, follows that path, that path, and then he comes up and over and settles in right there. So there's the first set of arcs that I want to focus on, but now we'll take a look at some other elements. We'll take a look at his head. So he comes back like so, right in here. This is the cross section of his center line and eye line, right in here, and he's starting right there. But if you look closely, you're going to see it come down slightly a little bit. And now it's coming back up, slightly up in that direction. Continues on up here, up, up, comes to a pause right there. And then when he comes forward, now we're going to see the arc of that cross section right there come out in this direction. Comes up, up. Keep following that arc, following it, comes back a little bit, and now he's coming back down. And now he's coming down. Here's the, the tail end of the arc right there. And then when he comes back down, it's a little bit of a different arc as he comes down. It's, it's like this, comes up that way, and then he comes back down this way up right there reaches his peak right there and then he comes back down in a different arc following this arc all the way through and now he's coming down and he's coming back up this way and you want to stay consistent with your arcs and this is important if you want to draw your arcs on your animation as you're proceeding that's fine if it helps you to do it go ahead and do it i recommend that especially for beginners then that way you can also keep track of your arcs when you go to shoot your pencil test or you just hit the play button to see it you'll be able to see if you're repeating your arcs or if you're not repeating your arcs and then he comes up comes down in another s arc down and then he comes back down that way, comes out a little bit out that way. Just those little bit of changes will really help to enhance your animation. And then he settles in like so. So now let's take another element. Let's take this foot right there, coming up that direction 
up, up, and then back down. I'm not repeating the arc. Now he's coming back down this way, this way. Heel hits the ground, foot flattens, and that's the basic arc. So I'll show you what the arc really is. If I'm just going to draw the entire arc, this is roughly what the arc is. It's an oval, and we're following this pattern back down. And there we go. So there's the arc for that foot. We'll take this one right here, comes up, comes back that way, continues back that way, holds, and comes back down. And this time what I did was he's coming out of it, it the arc is pushing out that way, and now it's coming down. Hits the ground, makes contact, and then the foot just lands and is held and registered right there. That's his legs. That's the arcs for the legs. Now let's take the big shape of his head. He's coming back into this anticipation right there. As he does so, this part of the head is coming down in that direction. This part is coming up in that direction, and I continue on. I stay true to that arc, into that pose, went down, but now he's basically reached the point right there, and now it's going to change. That's the main drawing, and now it's being pulled back down in that direction, but it's coming out further than our initial arc. It came up this way and now it's going to come back down that way. And there we can see it coming down in a different arc this direction, that direction, and then in to get that snap into when he pushes the button and then he comes down and then it's his hair drags catches up right here I've gone over the drag and follow through please check out that video we will explain drag and follow through and then he comes and now he's coming up that direction and again this is an S arc Continues up, up, settling in, then he comes back because he is now, the weight of him is pushing down right there. So it's going to snap the head back a little bit in that direction. And now he's getting pulled back down. And the main way I will say that you figure it out is that you roughly go with your arcs. Make sure that nothing goes out of arc because if it does, it's going to pop and you'll see it. So the main thing you want to do is look at your animation. As you're animating, you want to flip your drawings back and forth, back and forth. What I mean by flipping again is um, if you're doing it digitally, you want to scroll through your drawings and see if it's looking fluid. If it pops and you don't want it to pop, that means you went out of arc. So just be aware of that. You got to focus on the idea of your arcs following through, your drawings following through on those arcs. But you don't have to sit there and be extremely technical about it. You just want to roughly put it in. What I don't want to see you guys do is get so technical that you're sitting there and you're putting in all these, you know, spacings that are just absolutely correct. You want to, in the beginning, loosely just put them in there and get it and feel for it. 
it's a visual medium and you want to just feel it as you're going through it because some of the drawings the spacing which I'm going to do another video on charts and spacing there are times when you want your character to snap more so you want to break up the time and spacing but I'll get into that on another video but right now you just want to follow your arcs so there we got basically we have the head coming up down 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 this way that way coming around around and then he pops into there and then he comes back up and what I do it all really based on is like I said before the center line and the eye line that is what I draw in to keep control of the skull and the face as it's moving in, in space and this is true for all the other elements. Let's take a look at his shirt right here. Now, I really am aware as I'm scrolling through, here we got the shirt that is being dragged right there. And it's being dragged here, here. And I just decided to exaggerate it more, but it's going to follow this arc. He's coming through, through. And on this one, we can see the shirt is following a bit of a C arc just a little bit it's almost straight and then it comes back and now he's coming back this direction his the force is coming back and if I wanted to I could even drag that shirt a little bit more right there if I want just to make it clear for this lesson and now he's coming back here is dragging up and it snaps up into here same thing if we want to take a look at the shirt of the sleeve of his shirt he comes back here the arm has pulled the sleeve back but watch when he comes forward slightly with the arm the sleeve is going to keep following this arc of the drag and follow through and it comes back and it's following this arc right there and now it's caught up and I put some drag in and now it's coming back down this direction. Continues on. And this is what I mean when you at times you gotta just flip it and feel it and see if it's working. And now it's going to settle down in that direction, the sleeve. So we can see here, comes down, 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 around. I'm just going to keep drawing this arc. Comes up a little bit now and settles into that last pose. So that's really it. So basically, let's go over one more time what it is. You want to use C arcs. S arcs and they will vary. Some C arcs will be very subtle. That direction just matters where, what element, which direction it's moving. It could be this direction there. You can have S arcs that are like this, or you can have them that are very subtle, starting here, there, to there. And you can have arcs that go in a circular motion, which is actually broken up into two C arcs, but you can have arcs on walk cycles. You'll use arcs like this on certain elements. Uh, you can also, what you want to remember is you have an arc coming back that direction, this direction comes up, stops there, but then the action comes back down. You don't want to, for the most part, I have seen it done before, but for the most part, you don't want to repeat the arc. What you can do is you'll have arcs that come back that way, but then it loops around here, and then it comes back down into the arc, and it comes up there and loops around. You use that sort of arc a lot on walk cycles, being the arms and hands. And you can have them of this. There is no one set way of describing your arcs. They come in so many variations. You could have a same type of arc, figure eight arc, that could be like this. 
It just matters what you're conveying with your character. So, I hope this helps you guys. Thank you for watching. Please, if you like this, subscribe to 101 Animation. Thank you, bye.